Happy Monday out there, uh, broadcasting students. So welcome back from uh, spring break. Hope you had a restful a week away from the uh, remote learning we're doing here. A couple things uh, before I'm going to get into kind of a PowerPoint review here in a moment. But this will be our uh, final uh, week of this unit, which encompassed, you know, 60s, 70s TV. So I'm going to jump into a review here momentarily. And before I do that, I want to tell you that I'll be assigning an assessment later in the week, probably on Friday, the normally the day that we meet. And the assessment will be posted in the morning with an expectation that you'll have throughout the rest of the school day to deal with the assessment. No multiple choice. I'm going to be asking you essay questions. What will those essay questions be? Well, continue along right here into this next segment. I'll do a little PowerPoint review about the main topics, the key things to look for in those essay questions. Okay, Mr. Olson here. Um, I apologize for the not perfect uh, shot on the PowerPoint, but these are all slides you should have already gone through and taken. I recommend that you really don't watch this part of the video till you have finished the last week's assignments, the SNL notes, the SNL web quest. So this should be like something you're watching midweek in preparation for our Friday assessment. So when we assess on Friday, I'm gonna post the assignment at 9 a.m., which is when our class always meets on Friday. And then I'm gonna give you till midnight Friday evening. The assessment will not be any multiple choice. It will involve um, just, uh, if you will, um, essay questions. So what I'm gonna do here in this review, and I'm gonna go over here and kind of click through my slideshow, is I'm gonna go through the important things that you're likely to see in an essay question, because I know we haven't met, you haven't seen me do a lecture, you've been doing these PowerPoint notes on your own. So this will be about five to 10 minutes here. I'm gonna kind of quickly go through the important concepts. So this is the one PowerPoint, and I'm just taking a couple slides from each one, the expansion of cable TV that we did face to face. That was one of the last lessons we had before March 13th when uh, school got sent home on a remote learning basis because of the shelter in place. So the important thing about you know, early cable television is the expansion. You know, it blew up in the 50s and 60s. You might remember me discussing this in the lecture. Key thing happened in 1984 under President Ronald Reagan, the deregulation of the cable TV industry, which allowed for massive expansion. The 1984 Cable Act, which allowed for the wiring of America, basically. The largest cable expansion or really any project the largest project of any type construction project in this country in post-world war ii from 84 through 92 the country spent 15 billion dollars to connect people to be able to watch television so you're going to probably see an essay question about the expansion of cable tv so i recommend you look over the notes and you be able to you know kind of discuss what it meant to have cable take off in the 80s. As we look at cable today, and uh, let me go this way with it, all right? And again, these notes, you don't need to write them down. I'm just going back through a review here. But today, cable TV is available to 97% of the country. And so we've become this picture on the left, right? We've become couch potatoes, however, Cable TV, the cable we see today, is really owned by a small group of, com of companies. There are five corporations. Remember the big six that run what we watch on TV, right? There are six companies that run most of the TV viewing that we get. There are five companies that control the distribution of cable television. They control 80% of the markets that get cable, including the big giants like TCI and Time Warner. All right, the next part of our unit that's kind of important is the development of the early 60s sitcom, in particular this show, the Dick Van Dyke Show. You did a web quest about it, and I apologize, I went a little too quickly, so you might see my hand come in there. But this show was unique because it was patterned after your show of shows. We'll talk about that in a minute again. 
when we get to SNL. But this program was the first show that showed what Dad did at work. He was a comedy writer. And it was based on the real things that happened on your show of shows. It was uh, portrayed by uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke. The show was named after him. He played Rob Petrie. The show was an early 60s program. And here on this particular slide, which again, you've seen already in notes, don't be taking notes here, swept the five major Emmy Awards in 1964. So this was what a big comedy and what was known as the golden age of the sitcom. There were the copycat shows. The networks were not creative. Uh, Bewitched and I Dream a Genie were nearly identical. They involved females with magical powers. You may have seen these shows on, uh, you know, TV land and reruns, etc. Uh, Bewitched, you know, common guy that marries a witch with magical powers. And then in I Dream a Genie, it's an astronaut that discovers, uh, you know, a bottle, a genie emerges and she's got magical powers. You'll see the similarity in when they ran on the air. Bewitched was successful. I Dream a Genie came along the next year on NBC. And then again, the network's doing copycat programs with the Munsters and the Addams Family, both filmed in black and white, even though most programs by this time were color. They felt it emphasized the creepiness of each family. But these shows came on within like a week of each other and they went off the air within a week of each other. But that was, you know, it's the irony of TV. They're not creative, right, guys? They copy what the other networks are doing. All right, the next slideshow we, that I had you go through was on the, the explosion of, you know, dramas in the 60s, the sci-fi arrival, Star Trek, and other shows that followed like Lost in Space. Uh, there were a number of these kind of you know, modern uh, shows in outer space with people wearing, you know, cool uh, space uniforms, etc. Weird, different creatures in this particular program, Star Trek. There were the Romulans and the Vulcans and other uh, people that they ran into. The show, in all honesty, and its first run on television was miserable, horrible in the ratings. But in the aftermath, it got this kind of cult audience in some ways like Twilight Zone in the sense that Star Trek is a show that's had legs. So we have the sci-fi uh, show in the 60s and then we have the cool spy dramas based a lot on the success of the James Bond movies with Sean Connery. So. These guys were cool. I remember watching this show when I was a kid. It was one of the most hip things on TV. You had the two spies, uh, Napoleon Solo, on the left played by Robert Vaughn, and then Ilya Kiriakin on the right, a Russian spy. So an American and a Russian together fighting this cause for greater good. And then this brought, you know, magazines, books, and more shows like it.